Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is making his way around Europe, even meeting with Pope Francis today as the impeachment inquiry into President Trump gained steam back here at home in the U.S. Pompeo visited the Vatican earlier. He's come under increased scrutiny, of course, since he admitted yesterday he was on that phone call with the president of Ukraine. The secretary has also been, been slamming House Democrats as they seek information from State Department employees. So CBS News State Department and Foreign Affairs reporter Christina Ruffini joins us now from our Washington bureau to talk all about this. Christina, now that Secretary Pompeo has confirmed that he is, he was in fact on the call to Ukraine, could he face any consequences? It's a little bit unclear, right? Because he was on the call, but he didn't speak on the call. So how culpable is the Secretary of State for what the president says? And did he need to report what the president said to someone? And you also have to think about the, the norms that have been existent in previous administrations do not currently exist in the Trump administration. So maybe a previous Secretary of State would have said something to the president, or maybe they would have said something to someone else, but that may not be the case here. And I don't know what the culpability is for someone listening to that call. Now, obviously, it's not good news for Pompeo long term, who has other political aspirations of his own. The bigger this scandal gets, and now that he seems intimately involved in it, it could, you know, it could tarnish his image as he hopes to move forward with whatever he wants to do. Obviously, there are longstanding rumors of a Kansas Senate run and that he has his own presidential aspirations someday. We don't know that to be true, but you assume he's going to want some other job after Secretary of State, and his culpability or implication or uh, any of the above in this phone call and this scandal could harm that. Now, it's one thing and we were we had Fran Townsend on CBS this morning she was asked about whether it's normal to have the Secretary of State on a call like that mm -hmm. and she said of course it is uh, you'd have others including perhaps even the vice president the national security advisor uh, we know that Pompeo is now on that call the question of course is uh, the fact that he was one of those the reporting out there is that he advocated for the president to not release those transcripts the transcript of that call so I guess the question then becomes what kind of questions will Congress have I have a lot of questions but I'm curious what lawmakers will have uh, for Pompeo. Well, he also did the Sunday shows uh, right as the story started to break with the whistleblower, including CBS News. And he said on ABC and Fox News, you know, when he was asked about this whistleblower, he said, oh, you know, you're asking me to comment on something I haven't seen, or you're asking me to comment, so I've been very busy, I haven't read it. Well, he didn't need to read it. He was on the call. <laughs> so right. he, you know, it's not necessarily a lie, but it's very misleading, and uh, it's, it's a bit irksome, and it just doesn't, it doesn't look great. The other issue is, that call, it said it was, you know, a summarized transcript. It is not the full transcript. And I believe it was the Washington Post or one of the other outlets said that one of the one of the congressmen did a reading where they read it out and it's shorter than what the stated duration of the call was. Mm -hmm. So the next question for Secretary Pompeo, anyone else who was on that call and the president is what was not on that transcript? You know, there are ellipses, dot, dot, dots in that transcript. What is missing there? And is there something more incriminating that was said? And that's why they felt they needed to protect it and put it into this secret vault that everybody has been talking about that's not usually for these kinds of transcripts. So today, uh, Ukraine, uh, former envoy to Ukraine, uh, Kurt Volker, is going to be testifying on Capitol Hill behind closed doors. Secretary Pompeo has accused House Democrats of not giving state officials, you know, enough time to prepare for these interviews. But Volker seems perfectly prepared. I know that he abruptly resigned. Could he, he have been preparing for this for a while? I don't know if he's been preparing for it for a while, but um, sources we've talked to who know Volker, Volker's been around Washington a long time. Um, he had a, a decent reputation. He's a smart guy. He's worked in the area. He knows Ukraine. He knew this issue. He was passionate about it. And uh, friends and sources who know him say that he wants to get out ahead of it, and that's one of the reasons he quit, mm. is, uh, you know, it, it, there's no way, as far as we can tell, for the State Department to prevent someone who no longer works at the State Department from testifying today. And so we've seen originally there was this list of four and now five officials they wanted to testify. Pompeo pushed back and said that wasn't enough time to consult with State Department lawyers. But Volcker has said, hey, I don't work for the State Department. I'm doing what I want to do. And I'm, what I want to do is show up on Thursday and clear the air. Hmm. Um, so you also know this, uh, Christina, the State Department Inspector General met with and handed over documents to Congress yesterday. Some Democrats called the briefing a bit bizarre and confusing. What more can you tell us? 
Uh, I'm still slightly confused about it. I actually called our Hill uh, reporter, Rebecca Kaplan, uh, twice yesterday and said, okay, explain to me one more time what happened. Um, but asking for a bit of uh, clarity, it seems to come from Rudy Giuliani this morning, who said he was the source of some of these papers. So it was a big packet with calligraphy on the front that was delivered to Secretary Pompeo that had like pages of, of Trump. There were folders in the Trump Hotel and these wild kind of conspiracy theories that were very popular uh, on right wing blogs and things like that. And uh, it was delivered to the secretary who referred it to the inspector general who maybe it went to the FBI. It's not it's not super relevant to this case. It's a bit of a, an odd distraction unless the secretary or someone at the State Department took that information and acted on it or took that information as being from the White House, which it was not. It was from Rudy Giuliani and acted on it to then um, make these investigations into this prosecutor in Ukraine. And there are thoughts that it might have to do with the U.S. ambassador, um, Yovanovitch, who was then recalled and uh, retired out of her post a bit early. So we're still trying to work out exactly what that was, but I think bizarre was the go-to adjective for mm. that particular briefing. All right. Christina Ruffini, as always, we thank you. Thank you, guys. Glad you're feeling better, Emory. Thank you so much, Christina.